this is a continuation this is the ordered hashing part part 2 now this is a totally different way of thinking so it's based on a different idea as opposed to what was there in the part 1 now here uh, now whenever we try to define a ordered hash function which is fairly perfect in that it codes a large string in a small number <coughs> we have to bear in mind the following such a function we try to define must take into account the following two facts first one is there are a large more number of larger numbers than there are smaller numbers. second important fact you have to note which everybody knows is there is always greater variation in the lower order bits than there is in the higher order bits these are the two important facts that you have to bear in mind than there is in the Higher order bits. If this is this is for any random sample of keys or random sample of numbers, there will always be greater variation you will find in the lower order bits than you will find in the higher order bits. Okay, this is for any random selection. So these two are the important facts to bear in mind whenever we try to define an ordered hash function. Now this method of hashing is based on the following idea. We know that we use only <coughs> what is always necessary is suppose there are l dash bits of the key. This is zero bit, and this is the l dash minus one bit. So l dash minus one is the l dash bits is the total number of bits in the key. Again, we know already that the ratios associated from left to right are nothing but one by two, one by four, and so on, up to one by two power n. Okay. Now, what happens here is now if we try to, we know that the sum of the weights of the lower bits plus one is what adds up to the next weight, and there is no way of overcoming it. But it can be overcome if we think. <coughs> why should the weights have to be integers they can be fractions in this case mixed fraction with an integer part and a <coughs> fractional part okay so the <coughs> increment the sum of the weights plus 1 need me not come plus some other small quantity now since there is greater variation in the lower order bits and less variation in the higher order bits we can invert the sense of the growth of this here and add half here to this weight to the next weight add 1 by 4 to the next weight add 1 by 8 in other sense we just flip this and we add in this fashion so the weights will now we start off with 1 for the right most bit as conversion and then the set for the next bit we add the weight 1 plus half to the equal to 3 by Now three by two plus one will give you five by two. Okay, so to five by two, the next weight will be five by two plus one by four equal to eleven by four. So okay, so now eleven by four plus five by two should give you. Twenty-one by four. So the next weight will be twenty-one by four plus one by eight. <coughs> Is equal to twenty-one 
43 by 8 and so on. So the series of weights to a small or a few terms will turn out to be something like this. to 0 comma w weight is assigned to 1 comma sum is assigned to 0 term to is assigned to 1 comma hash value v is assigned to 0 then we have less than L dash if k, k of i is i is a bit of k k is the key then v to v plus w then the second one here you have T two, T by two, third one you have Q to W, fourth one you have W to W plus S plus T, fifth one you have S to U, sixth one you have I to I plus 1 and the fourth one you have return V. Now this form of hashing is ideally useful for code in the case of databases more than for compression. Even for compression it might be alright, but for databases it is more suitable. Now there are other ways of coding, yeah, losslessly coding strings for bytes alone other than by using bits, but this is useful if you are only looking for a fairly rough hash, other than a perfect hash, you are looking for a fairly rough hash, this is an ideally suited hash for that, so this is that algorithm. 